I'm Cow, a former competitive player with over 3,500 hours played. This series explains some of the most vital mechanics to help you win more games and improve as a player. In this video, I'm covering the three types of grenades available to attackers the flashbang, the smoke grenade, and the frag grenade. Flashbangs are the most straightforward type of grenade in Siege. They detonate one second after hitting a surface or player, making them one of the most consistent grenades to use. Since flashes can't be cooked, it's easy to learn the throwing mechanics of grenades using these flashes because there's no risk of blowing yourself up. Flashbangs will blind your enemy if they are looking towards the stun within around 5-7 to seven meters. This is close but still gives you some room for error. From this range, players can still turn away from the flash and avoid being stunned. However, from about 3 meters away, the flash will stun a player no matter where the player is looking. This mechanic isn't very consistent, so don't rely on a full stun even if you think that the player should be totally blind. Flashes are mostly used to burn utility, ADSs and magnets, or to clear an isolated opponent from a position. This is because flashes aren't reliable for long range engagements, and they are the most plentiful throwable available to attackers currently. Two sets of flashes can burn every ADS in a round, allowing for frags and smokes to be used freely. In most situations, you should not assume you flash two enemies because the chances of this happening are near zero. The best way to play with the flash is to flash an individual opponent, then peek them quickly before moving back into cover. However, it should be noted that this is fairly predictable, and swinging in as soon as the flash goes off could result in you getting pre-fired. To avoid this issue, flash once, wait for the pre-fire, then flash again, only peeking after the second flash is detonated. Since flashes tend to be finicky, you should definitely drone to figure out the precise location of a defender. I'll be making a video on droning in the near future. Teamwork is also important with flashes, as flashing someone in can speed up the kill and make it harder for a defender to predict where the attacker is peeking. Smokes are similar to flashes in their fuse timers, except they detonate 3 seconds after a collision rather than 1 second. Their resulting smoke cloud lasts for about 10 seconds. Smokes are most often used to cover lines of sight and execute a take on sight. However, this is often done incorrectly due to a misunderstanding of how smoke obscures vision. Most people don't send smokes deep enough for them to be useful. For example, on Bank's basement objective of CCTV. If the attackers smoke off in front of the sight door and in front of red rotate, defenders are free to rotate through red and even get into CC without being seen. Nitrous can be thrown and plant can be denied. However, if the attackers were to smoke off slightly into the door and rotate, not only will the entire sight be visible to the attackers, but due to how smokes work, Defenders will be seen pushing through the smoke in very exposed positions and will not be able to see the attackers until 100% exposed. Frag grenades are by far the most complex grenade in Siege. With a 4 second timer from pressing the key to explosion, it is the only grenade that can be cooked. With that being said, it's very important that you don't take damage or die from the grenade, so proficiency with the frag grenade is very important. Cooking a grenade is probably the most basic skill needed to not die to your own grenade. Unless you possess a perfect inner clock, you're going to be working off of ticks. These ticks start slowing up progressively faster until the nade explodes. The general rule of thumb is 5 ticks for a throw from decent range, and 7 ticks for close range nades, for ceilings, barricades, and walls for the most part. However, cooking is a very intuitive skill. Personally, I never learned the 5 tick, 7 tick rule. With enough practice, you can develop a feel for exactly how long you need to cook a nade. Baking nades is the second skill you should be comfortable with. Throwing a nade leaves you very exposed, and if you're attempting to swing through a door to quickly throw a nade, timing becomes much more difficult. Instead of doing this and risking being shot, cook the nade slightly less and bake it off of doorways or walls to kill defenders sitting or standing close by. This is very useful on maps like Border on Armory Wall. Sometimes not cooking a nade is also a good option if you have a teammate watching the defender's escape route. This can speed up room clear and force the defender's hand, and is especially useful if you're not comfortable cooking the nade or you don't know the precise location of the defender. Even if a nade isn't dead on, people tend to freak out if a nade drops near them. Nades aren't just for killing defenders, however. They can be invaluable tools for clearing utility. This includes castle barricades, wall denial, evil eyes, and barbed wire. For castle barricades, cook the nade so that it explodes as close to the bottom of the barricade as possible to ensure that enough damage will be done to the barricade to break it open. For wall denial, nading the ceiling can be safer than challenging a bandit or cade playing on the wall. This can also deny tricking or net you a kill if the defender is unaware. 
Evil eyes require the nade to be almost perfectly cooked to destroy it. This will take a lot of practice, but it's very helpful when trying to commit to a site execute and destroy plot denial. Barbed wire is the easiest utility to clear because the nade just has to be in the vicinity of the barbed wire to destroy it. You still have two nades to your name each round. I wouldn't recommend clearing barb with nades unless there's a crazy amount stacked in a hallway or other utilities present. Utility management is a very important aspect of playing with nades. That's all I have for this video. I hope everyone learned something from it. The channel's coming up on a thousand subscribers. I just think that's crazy. Thank you guys so much for all the support. I hope to get more videos out soon. Just to let you guys know, I stream live on Twitch almost every day starting around 8 to 9 Eastern. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day. <laughs> I got flashed. <laughs> like, okay. I had no idea where I was aiming, so I was kind of.